Welcome to the Word Examined Podcast. I'm your host, Katie Wagner, intern pastor and true crime enthusiast. We've come to the end of our season as we dove into the ultimate true crime story, the life, ministry, and death of Jesus Christ. This is a story you had heard before, but I hope that with this telling, you were able to place yourself in the story and consider what it would have been like to shout Hosanna at the triumphal entry, share a meal at the Last Supper, and bear witness to one of the most brutal forms of murder in our history. I'm glad you've been on this journey with me. Last week on the Word Examine podcast, we found ourselves bearing witness to the brutal murder and public execution of Jesus Christ. We watched as Jesus was tortured, as those who had conspired against him caused him great pain and suffering as he was nailed to the cross and died a slow death. We watched as Jesus' lifeless body was taken down from the cross and laid in the tomb. But I told you the story wasn't finished. In fact, it is far from finished. Let's get started. It was early on the first day of the week, at early dawn, when Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James brought spices they had prepared to anoint Jesus and tend to his body at the tomb. They walked silently as they drew nearer to the place where he lay. But as they came closer, they noticed something was amiss. They noticed that the tomb did not look as it had when they had seen it earlier. They found that the stone that sealed the tomb had been rolled away. They were perplexed as to how this could have happened, because that stone was very large and would have taken many men to open it. They entered the tomb and were shocked by what they saw. It shook them to their very core. Jesus' body was gone. They saw no sign of Jesus' body when they had entered the tomb. In its place, they saw two men standing by the place where he had been laid, standing there in dazzling white robes. The women were afraid and bowed their faces to the ground in fear. The men turned to the women and said, Do not be afraid. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinful men, crucified, and on the third day rise? The women looked at each other with shock and amazement and they remembered Jesus' words to them. They remembered all that he had said, all that he had taught them, all that he had instilled in them in the way he healed and cared for others. At that moment, they fled the tomb, running with amazement and excitement to tell the eleven remaining apostles and the rest what they had found and experienced. Love good music? Come to Trinity Lutheran Boyceville on Sunday, May 1st, as the Trinity Men's Band leads worship with inspiring music and a fun atmosphere. Stick around for the annual smelt feed served by the men of Trinity immediately following worship. Don't like smelt? No worries there. We have meatballs for you, plus homemade chips, tater tots, bars, and a beverage with a free will offering taken. Hope to see you on Sunday, May 1st to worship and eat with us. The women finally made it back to where the disciples were staying since Jesus had died. They had stayed together in a small place, away from others since they were still hiding from the authorities and those who had done this to Jesus. When they arrived, they ran into the room with excitement and exclaimed, Jesus has risen! His body was not there! Jesus is alive! The disciples looked at the women with incredulous stares and skepticism. Their words that Jesus had risen and the message they had received from the men in dazzling clothes seemed to be an idle tale, 
and they did not believe them. But Peter, feeling that the women might be right, rose up from where he was sitting and ran to the tomb, faster than he had ever run before. When he arrived, he looked into the tomb and saw the linen cloths lying there, but he couldn't muster up enough courage to go in. When another disciple arrived shortly after him, they went into the tomb together and saw the cloths that had been wrapped around Jesus' lifeless body, the cloth that had been lovingly placed around his bruised and bloodied head, lying there by itself. But there was no body. Jesus was not there. Were the women right? Had they been telling the truth? They wondered what had happened there. Something had happened because Jesus was gone. That very day, two people were walking on the road to a village called Emmaus. Emmaus was about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with one another about all the things that had happened in the past few days since Jesus had died. As they were walking and talking, Jesus himself came near and walked with them. But they did not recognize him. Their eyes were kept from recognizing him. They were standing in the presence of Jesus, the risen Christ, and could not recognize him. Jesus turned to them and asked, What are you discussing with each other as you walk along? This stopped them in their tracks. They looked at this man with bewilderment. What did he mean, what are we discussing? Didn't he know what had happened? So one of them said, Are you the only one who does not know the things that have taken place in these past few days? Had this man been living under a rock? Was he dead to the world? Was he wrapped up in other things? Jesus asked them, What things? They replied with urgency, The things about Jesus of Nazareth. This man was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. The chief priests and other officials condemned him and crucified him. But we had hoped that he would be the one to redeem Israel and fulfill God's promises. We had hoped for many things. It is now the third day since these things took place. And furthermore, some women in our group astounded us when they told us what they had found when they went to the tomb this morning. They did not find his body there. He was gone. They told us they had seen a vision of angels who told them that Jesus was alive. So some of us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said. But we did not see him. Jesus turned to them, a wry smile on his face. Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Wasn't it necessary that the Messiah should suffer and die before he enter into his glory? Then Jesus began to quote scripture to them, starting with Moses and all the prophets. They continued to walk along together and listen to this man interpret scripture for them. But they still didn't recognize who he was. As they came near the village of Emmaus, Jesus walked ahead of them as if he were going on. It was getting darker out, so they turned to him and said, Stay with us. It's almost evening, and the day is almost over. So Jesus did. He went to stay with them. They prepared a meal, and they all sat down together to eat. When Jesus was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. Their eyes grew wide as they realized where they had seen this happen before. At that moment, their eyes were opened and they recognized him. This was Jesus who had been with them the whole time. This was incredible. But before they could speak, Jesus vanished, and they were left alone with their newfound revelation. Leaving the meal on the table... They ran to the other disciples and shared what had happened. They came bounding in. Jesus has risen! He just broke bread for us! He is alive! 
Thomas, another disciple of Jesus, would not believe them. He said, Until I touch the places where the nails pierced his skin, I won't believe it. While they were talking about what had happened, Jesus appeared before them. He spoke with kindness and compassion as he had many times before. Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified, and some thought they were seeing a ghost. But Jesus said, You do not have to be afraid. You do not have to doubt. Thomas, come and look at my hands and my side. Touch me and see that I am real. I am not a ghost, for a ghost does not have flesh or bone. Jesus showed them his hands and his feet, the places where the nails had been driven into his flesh as he suffered on the cross. The disciples had mixed reactions. Some felt great joy but still felt feelings of astonishment and disbelief. Jesus continued to speak with them. He said, While I was still with you, I spoke these words to you. Everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Jesus began to quote scripture to them once again, opening their minds and hearts to what he was saying, and they finally understood what he had been telling them all along. Jesus continued, The Messiah is to suffer and die, and to rise from the dead on the third day. Repentance and the forgiveness of sins is proclaimed in the name of the Lord to all nations. You are witnesses to these things. I am sending you what my Father has promised. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always, to the end of the age. At that moment, Jesus blessed them and was carried up into heaven, leaving his beloved disciples on earth to continue his mission, to continue bearing the word of love, compassion, forgiveness, repentance, and mercy in a world aching to hear it. The gospel that was instilled in them by their teacher and friend. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead for them, for you, and for your neighbor. The living presence of Christ is awakened in us as it was for his disciples on that blessed Easter morning. The life-giving and life-saving work of Jesus Christ continues to live on in our hearts and minds as we go out into the world proclaiming Christ crucified and resurrected for all of God's children. This podcast may have ended, but our story and mission is just beginning. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Happy Easter. Amen. Today's episode is brought to you by Zebedee's Fishing Company. We catch the best seafood on the Sea of Galilee. Fresh fish for your dinner table or to serve 5,000 people. From the sea to your table, courtesy of Zebedee's Fishing Company, formerly known as Zebedee and Sons. Thank you for listening. This podcast was written, recorded, and edited by Katie Wagner. The Word Examined Podcast, available on Anchor Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify.